presentation of this program is made possible by a grant from General Foods Corporation, by public television stations, and by grants from the Ford Foundation and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. <coughs> Zoom barrel from Helen McCoy who didn't give any address. I have a game I have a game idea for I have an idea for a game. It'll take two people. Each of you take half the straws I've included and put them in the in a little pile in front of you. Now at the word go, try to move these straws to the side by sucking them up with another straw. The first one to move his whole pile to the side wins. And to find out what's inside today. Wait, oh, wait. no. What are you going to do? You got to suck them away? Wait a minute. I'll show yeah. you. Wait, you wait, can't wait, wait, wait. Don't crowd. How no, many straws are there? Three. But you got to take one straw out and okay. yeah. it would be too easy. You got to yeah, suck them. Yeah. So you got to suck them up and put them away. I want them that weird. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. You each get a pile and you use one straw so you put the whole things in your pile. Use one straw. Do it. And then try to suck Do the longest one. Suck them. Yeah, use the longest Those are ones. Exactly. Piles. Put them in piles. Yes, put them in piles. That's, this one's long. Yeah, this put this one, one like this. Put it like this. Okay, move back. Wait, 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 w
Skykomish used to be a big town when they were laying tracks out here for the trains. But now only freight trains go through. And just the workmen and engineers live here now. This here is the Jenny store. It carries pop and milk and dairy goods and nails and painting goods, and groceries and that. It's the only store in town also. This here is a fire station. The last time they used the fire trucks was for a water fight out in the street. The theater here, they had to close it down. They didn't get enough business. They had some pretty good films there though occasionally. the school it was built in I think 1939 the there's not very many people in it in the high school there's only around 50 it just seemed like that the, the basket had a vacuum they were right in there they, what they tried to do they tried to foul Johnny best out we have some real characters in town. One of them is Joe Walmer. He goes to all the Sky Comish basketball games. And when they got out there on the floor, they beat Monroe. When anybody talks to Joe, all he ever talks about is basketball. And in fact, he never even stops talking about basketball. All my life, he said. He said that the Sky Boys. We have two taverns in town. The one right here is Sweet Peas. It draws in most of the hippies and skiers in the wintertime. And then over here is the Whistling Post. It draws in the town people and a few outsiders, and it does a real good business. Most of the men in town work for the logging industry because there's so much forest land and that in the state of Washington. My dad, he works on a caterpillar, either building road or clearing land for logging companies. When I get older, I'd like to work for the Forest Service. It sounds like fun working out in the woods and doing different things, you know, like surveying road jobs and that. It'd be sort of fun. Is this the first time I've ever had a job in the summer? I'd go up the chalet and I'd clean out the garbage cans in the back of the chalet, I'd put liners in them, and then I'd get a free meal and then I'd get paid. There's always something to do here in Sky. Sky Commerce River it goes right down through the town and it's really a great place to go intertubing. I like to live in the sky because the trees are surrounding you instead of buildings and you don't have the pollution problem and there's not as many people as there is in the big city. The river is here, you can go swimming and fishing in it and yeah, it's just a real good place to live. This is by Valerie Morgan of Linwood, Washington.
the case of the locked room. Just as John Archer reached his apartment door, he heard the tinkling of broken glass. <coughs> what has happened? He asked himself as he ran to unlock the door. His cat, Tom, brushed against him in welcome, but John Archer had no time for welcomes. There, on the floor, lay Molly and Ben. Thank goodness they're still breathing, said John. Their lives can be saved. Poor Molly, poor Ben. Who could have done this dastardly deed? The windows were locked. The only other way to get in was through the door. The only key to the door was in John Archer's pocket. Nevertheless, there they lay on the living room floor amid broken glass and a pool of water. Yet John knew at once who the criminal was. Can you figure out what happened and how? Stay tuned. of the locked room? I have the solution. The deed was done by Tom. Remember John Archer's cat? The victims were goldfish. The sound of the breaking glass was that of the fishbowl. The water on the living room floor was water from the fishbowl. If you have a mystery, a riddle, or a story, send it to Zoom, Box 350, Boston, Mass, 021. Clarence the Cat, written and illustrated by Julie Murs of Brooklyn, New York. One sunny morning, while Clarence, Dexter, and Hoagie were packing for a big picnic, Tommy came running down the mountainside to them and cried, Spiky villain is stealing Mama's jewelry. Help! Please come and get him away. Clarence, Dexter, and Hoagie were soon running to Mama Bear with Tommy. When they all got to Mama's house, she was standing in the door crying and said that Spiky had gone in the direction of the lake. So they all ran that way. They ran down the hill and over to the lake and saw Spiky in the middle of the lake in a boat. But he was in the one with a hole in the bottom. Spiky began to sink slowly into the water while a Julie started to float on top in an inflatable bag. Hoagie swam to the bag and safely brought it back to shore. Clarence, Dexter, and Tommy were happy. And Tommy said, let's hurry and bring the Julie back to my mama. They all hurried to mama and brought her the Julie. She started bouncing on her bed because she was so happy. Then she said, since you were all so helpful to me, I'll join your picnic and bring all the good food I have. So they all went to the orchid forest for the biggest picnic they had ever had. Zoom will resume after this important message. Habai fabok sabal dabe rabin tubby vubby laban. Dabe sabi zaba jabar abba bubby dabba bubby pubby nabba thubba tubber. Dabas pubby nabba thubba tubber kabums abin tabu kabines. Waban krabby mubby tabu krabban chubby. Abba bubby dabba bubby pubby nabba thubba tubber. Dabas nabat stabbit tabby dabba rubble above yabber mubber. Sabo baba yabbit abet yabber nabber rubbish stubble. Now back to Zoom. My name is Rebecca Raja, and we have about 25 sheep on our farm. We started raising them because we were interested in having wool to spin, so we could make our own sweaters and things. Shearing the sheep is a pretty tricky thing to do. You have to be very careful of the shears and the sheep too. So my mother usually does the shearing. 
Sharing doesn't hurt the sheep at all. As a matter of fact, if they weren't shared, their fleece would get all matted and tangled. If the wool is brown or black, you wouldn't dye it. You would just use it as it is. If you have some white wool, you can dye it almost any color you want. There are lots of natural things like plants that you can use to make dyes. I like goldenrod because it's easy to find. You have to use more than just plain goldenrod to make a good dye mixture. There are other chemicals that you have to put in too. You boil the goldenrod in water for about 15 minutes and then scoop it all out. The goldenrod makes the water into a yellow dye. When the wool's dried, it's all tangled. You have to brush it out and get it untangled before you can spin it. Combing the wool is called carding. When the wool gets all nice and fluffy, you're finally ready to start spinning. To make the wool into yarn, you use a thing called a spindle. It's sort of like a toy top with a long piece of wood that the yarn wraps around. You just give it a twist and it spins the wool around and around and it wraps it into a strand of yarn. You have to be a little careful not to pull too hard and break the strands. You just keep spinning and adding more wool until you think you have enough yarn for whatever you want to weave or knit. dreams, bad dreams, or even nightmares. We do sometimes, and we had a rap about it. Oh yeah, when I was young, I used to, after every single horror movie I'd watch, I'd be scared to go to bed because I know I'd have a bad dream. But I, I hate bad dreams, I really do, because they, so, they scare you so much, and you wake up in the middle of the night. I find myself, when I have a dream, I wake up. I wake up, bad dream, if it's really bad, I wake up in it. And like I look around my room and you know I'm just looking and I hear these buzzing noises, my radiators clink clink clicking and then I, I was I had this really bad dream and I got up in the middle of the night. This is true by the way. And I got up in the middle of the night once and I'm looking around and this was a warm night and my I my bed's this way and I have right above my head a window. And the window's usually open. It's it's like a slide window and the shade was down. And all of a sudden, you know, the wind blows it in, and the shade goes, and all of a sudden, slack, the, the, the shade goes, like that. Yeah. I stiffened up, I looked up, and I saw it was my window shade. Oh, but you know what? Like me, man, everything in my room starts to come alive, like, so and there's a, sh a white shirt move. there, suddenly a skeleton. Oh, my hat's falling around the room. Oh, yeah. listen. I have a whole bunch yeah. of dolls. I have a whole bunch of dolls. Oh, my dance your over. daughter, your big daughter. Yeah, yeah but over in one corner, like, this is my granddaughter and my sister. I have a sister. There's a corner of the room, big, big and my, the my, like, here's my bed, and here's the corner of the room. And all the dolls are, like, they have big eyes, right? And 
Like when you have a real bad dream, you wake up. First thing you look at is because the dogs are straight ahead of you. Go, yeah. First thing you look at the dogs. Yeah. They stop. The eyes stop. Stop blinking. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, now and my yeah. dog starts barking. Then he gets. No, it was one dream. I was sleeping over my friend's house, right? And he has all these um, Dracula pictures oh, yeah. and yeah. King Frank. Kong and things like that. Yeah. And so you know, I slept in there, right? And I was just getting down to sleep. This wasn't a dream either. What? It wasn't a dream. So like tra like Nancy no, said. And then go to sleep, right? I look up, look up at the Dracula picture. Looks like his eyes are just looking straight at me. Because when I looked at it before, I was looking at a girl that was on the picture, and then I looked at it again, and it looked like it was looking at me. Now something, it looked like it had. It looked just like that with three fingers in the window. What? Oh, I don't know what it was. I, I found out in the morning, I think it was the knob for the window. It was really, it was really scary. Oh. And that sweating half the W. Do you like making funny faces with makeup? We do. And we had a lot of fun getting ready for the song we're doing at the end of the show. Close your eyes, just don't sweat. If you make me a black eye, I'll kill you. <laughs> Now you tell me. <laughs> oh. Oh my I can word. see why someone I look like in your eyes. You look funny. Look <laughs> stupid. <laughs> No gray eye. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, No, now just be a plain face, Sam. Uh. Four are alive and three are dead. She has two eyes upon her head. Four are alive and 
Three are dead, she has seven hairs upon her head. One is brown and one is red, she has two eyes upon her head. One is brown and one is red. your name and address on it and a stamp and we'll send you a zoom card say you wake up in the middle of the night you got an idea that's out of sight so you jump out of bed look around your room you're gonna write it all down and send it to zoom or say you just seen something on this show or someone cool you just gotta know write it all down don't make a mess and don't forget your name and address. Include a stamp so we can drop you a card. Then dip your note in the bucket of lard. David doesn't know what he's talking about. You put it in an envelope without a doubt. Take your typewriter, pencil, or pen. And if you make a mistake, you gotta do it again. of this program was made possible in part by a grant from General Foods Corporation and by public television stations. <laughs>